I'm going. I'm actually going because I've seen it. Okay. No, I'm going. Oh my god, there's one behind you. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. quick. Just go, just go. Be a fan, just go, go, go. We are Andrew and Leanne, and in 2021, we packed our bags, left our jobs, and started traveling full time. We're currently in Thailand, and after leaving Koh Lanta, we have now made our way to the amazing town of Krabi. Hello, good morning and welcome to the town of Krabi and welcome to the Seabass Hotel. It's a fairly new hotel. Again, we've found a gem. Amazing aircon panel. Lovely. A uh, place to hang your clothes and store your bags. There's an umbrella. Space for your shoes. And then the bathroom is lovely. Nice toilet, everything's all clean. And in the shower, We've got soap, conditioner, shampoo, nice big shower, nice huge mirror. And then walking through into here, we've got a kettle, cups, water, coffee, two tea bags. For some reason, we always only get one tea bag, but this time we've actually got two. A uh, nice menu. This TV has like Netflix and YouTube on it, which is lovely. Fridge. Oh. Andrew's little desk where he's going to do all the editing. Nice big, huge couch. Oh, so soft. And a massive bed. Let's see how soft it is. Oh, oh actually, that's really soft. So, this place is lovely. It's quite a new hotel, it's very modern. This whole place was £17 a night. We're here for a week. I mean, £17 a night amazing and um, we've got a lot of exploring to do around Krabi. So to get here from Koh Lanta, we headed over to Saladan Pier. We booked a transfer where a minivan picked us up from our hotel, took us over, jumped us on a small little ferry and then drove us directly to our hotel here in Krabi. The whole thing cost 300 baht each and it was very, very quick, very efficient and we'd highly recommend. So yeah, if you need to get a transfer from Koh Lanta to Krabi, head over to Saladan Pier and there was a little desk just as you entered the pier and the woman was lovely and she sorted everything out for us. We're actually going to Tag Cave Temple today, which is this temple on a mountain which is like 1200 steps up. We've got plenty of water, loads of sun cream and we're ready to go. So I think I've just seen the temple out the car window. It's literally on top of like a limestone mountain. It is like in the sky. If it's the right one, we're in trouble. So you know sometimes when you underestimate things online, I think this might be one of those times. Stop before we go up, carving up because it is the top of a mountain. So, covered up, carved up, let's go. So this cave here used to be the location where a tiger used to sleep from the morning sun. A group of Buddhist nuns and monks came here to start practicing a particular branch of Buddhism and the tiger migrated up the cliff but nobody's actually ever seen him since. And that's why they call it the tiger cave. Also, as far as I'm aware, they actually believe that on this plaque behind us 
is one of the footprints of Buddha himself. Amazing. So this is the start of the mammoth adventure that we've got to go on now. You probably can't see it in the camera, but it literally disappears up the cliff. So wish us luck. We're not going to look the same when we're down. Oh, and there's warnings about the monkeys snatching your purse as well. So we've got everything zipped up, locked down. It's not going anywhere. Look how tall these steps are. Yeah, these steps, they're, uh, they're very nearly vertical. Each step's about a foot up in height. Whew. We're about five minutes through. Um, I think we've climbed maybe, maybe 200. I think we're about 200 of the 1,200 steps up. And uh, I'm already exhausted. Okay, we're actually going to 16 o'clock. Now we're going. Oh my god, there's one behind you. Quick, 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 quick. Just go, just go. Go, 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 absolutely legging it. Oh my god, they're fast. No, they wait until we stop. That monkey wasn't coming for us. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. That monkey was coming down the stairs. And when Leanne shoved me out the way, the monkey absolutely bricked it. Oh, that adrenaline got me up another flight. 377. Only another 900 to go. Five hundred and six. <laughs> That's so steep. <gasps> Six hundred. Seven hundred. Eight hundred. Nine hundred. <laughs> Just to put into context how high this place actually is, the Batu Caves in Malaysia are only 290 odd steps. This is 1,200 and something. And it's 33 degrees today. Go. Look at that step. Look at that step. You need a hoist to get up. Some serious steps. One thousand. I'm Kartik. 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 We just yeah. bumped into Kartik, and he also runs a YouTube channel called Thailand Tamilan. Uh, this is going to be his first video, so check yeah. him out. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Fellow YouTuber. Nice to see them out and about. <laughs> 1,200. And 20. And 20. No. I think we're here. That's the top. He's running. Three, two, one. Oh. oh, so cool up here. So it was definitely worth the 1,000 plus steps to get up here. I mean, look at these views. They are incredible. You can see everything. You can see the sea, Krabby Airport, all the palm plantations. 
Also, there are like huge things up here. There's this massive bell. I'm pretty sure it's made out of concrete, but how did they bring all that cement and things up? And there's a gigantic butter over there as well. That's impressive. So I'm quickly just gonna throw on the zoom lens, shoot some sexy B-roll, and then we'll see you back down at the bottom. I feel bad, so I'm gonna give them a bit more water because there's hardly any water in there. Give them a little bit. So the monkeys here are no joke. On our way down, we actually passed a group of monkeys on the stairs that would not budge out of our way. And uh, as we got down near the bottom, we could hear noise rustling behind us. And then rocks started landing at our feet. The monkeys were literally throwing stones at us from up in the trees. If you're here, be careful of the monkeys. Definitely don't feed them. Don't walk around with any food um, on show because they, they will come at you for your food. But other than that, this place, absolutely amazing. The views from the top were stunning. Um, Pike itself was very hard, very hot, but I actually really enjoyed it. So if you're in Krabi, definitely come to the Tiger Cave Temple. So we've made it back to the hotel. Uh, Leanne has just jumped in the shower and we've both changed clothes because we were both a little bit sweaty. And now we are going to head out because there's a place down the road that does the best Pad Thai that I have ever had. So we're gonna head there now. <laughs> yeah, there's not been much rain here in Thailand for the past couple of weeks. At least we haven't seen much, so they just have water in the trees. So as I said before, this place does the best Pad Thai I've had so far in all of Thailand. If you look on Google, its name is Pad Thai 40 Bat. It's spelt wrong on Google, they spelt it Pad Thai 40 Bat but it's so well priced. The standard pad thai is 40 baht. I got the pad thai with the fried mussels, which is incredible. Um, they're, they're so crispy and, and it's still juicy and it's, it's, it's amazing, honestly. If, you, if you're in Krabby Town, come to this place. They're so friendly, so nice, it's so cheap, and the pad thai is to die for. Good morning and welcome to Dinosaur. No, I'm only joking. Welcome back to Krabby. We're still here, here for a few more days. Today, we're actually standing outside the Animan Bead Museum. We haven't been inside yet, and opposite is the Art Museum. Got a few things planned today. First of all, food, because we've not had anything to eat yet, and it's actually midday, and we are addicted to dim sum. So we're going to a really nice place that we've eaten already this week. They've said that we can film in there. I am super excited, it's amazing, but you'll find out about that. We'll then go into a park down by the sea and then after that we're going to finish off the day with Walking Street which is only open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, let's check it out. our favorite dim sum place that we've been to so far in Krabi. It's called Pai Yim Bai Li. And the people here are so lovely again. Ordering dim sum is a little bit different here in Thailand compared to what we're used to, say like in Malaysia. You actually select what you want. Oh, Kapong Ka, thank you. You select what you want from the selectables. 
and then you put it on a tray and give it to the people who cook it and then the server comes and brings it to your table. You always seem to get a pot of tea and two little cups and a bowl of salad and lots of condiments to go with it. We love this place. Um, highly, highly recommended. So we have gone for quite a selection here. We always tend to get our favourite barbecue steamed pork buns because they are just incredible. You cannot beat them. Uh, we've both gone for stew mine because they're amazing. Leanne's gone for her ginger steamed fish. In fact, I went for a piece of that as well. My favourite chicken feet because I love me some chicken feet. So the best way to eat these is to basically suck off a toe <laughs> and then spit out the tiny bones. There's a toe bone. I know it looks disgusting, but they taste so good. They've been marinated in like star anise, um, all kinds, and all kinds of other aromatic herbs. Amazingly, they're one of my favorite foods to eat in Asia. Um, when I first tried them, it's something that I thought would completely gross me out. And yet I love them. I just love the reaction that people give him when he orders them because they just can't believe that a Westerner would order chicken feet. But well, he just keeps ordering them no matter where he goes. I'm a little bit embarrassed by how much we've just eaten. Oh, 320 baht. 320 here. Oh. 320 baht for all that food, which is about it's about seven pounds. So to be fair, I think that's pretty amazing. So here we are renting motorbikes again for the third time. The man is just fixing on the phone holder so that we have sat nav while we're driving. Lights working. Yeah. Indicator. Working. Yay. So the second stop of the day here in Krabi is Thara Park. As you can see, Leanna's already making use of the facilities. Trying to get fit, work off some pad thai. <laughs> Met a lovely little boy when we parked the bikes and he was showing us his little dump truck. He's so adorable and he's running around the place singing songs. There's also a cuckoo in the background. It's just people chilling, doing a bit of yoga, having a picnic. It's fairly busy but it's very relaxed and across the view from this lovely apparatus is the sea. Right there. We're gonna go wander around the park, see what there is. Do some exercise. Do some exercise. And uh, yeah, once again, bikes, absolute dream having bikes here in Thailand. You can get around the city so easily. And do some exercise on these because it's awesome. So we've just stopped off for a quick pit stop. It is roasting outside. So we've just got a few ice creams, a couple of drinks, and we're gonna chill for a minute before we carry on exploring the rest of the park. So I went for the mixed fruit with tomato ice lolly. I don't normally like tomato, but it was calling my name. You can see there's loads of like fruit pieces inside and it's delicious. So we've been sat here for a while now and it's really interesting just watching the long tails going back and forth over this little river. Uh, they're carrying people's motorbikes. So people are pulling up to the pier with the motorbikes. Somehow they're getting them onto these little wooden long tail boats and shipping them across to the other side. I really would not trust putting my motorbike on one of them. Can they seem to be very successful though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of them, I swear, had like 10 bikes on it before. It was like halfway down in the water. I wonder how many they've dropped in the past. You'd be surprised, probably none. It's really interesting to watch them. Also, we were sitting on the, um, the wall over there, but an elderly man basically stood up and left and shouted at us and told us this bench was free. Once again, everybody here is so friendly. It's really, really nice and refreshing. Yeah, I really, really like it here. Mm. I knew I liked it here. As soon as I got to the mainland, I was like, mm, yeah, I like it here. Mm. So we just realized actually that this little park that we're walking around away from the main park down there, it's an alphabet. They take you down a little path and there's letters. So F for fish, G for giraffe and H for horse. 
Great way to learn the alphabet for kids. So now that we've spent an hour or so here in the park, we're going to jump back on the bikes, head back to the hotel, have a quick shower and a dip in the pool. And then we're gonna head over to the walking street around five or six o'clock. See you back at the hotel. So here we are, we've made it on the bikes to Ao Nang Beach. Am I saying it right? Ao Nang Beach, yeah. Ao Nang Beach, and it is a long beach. As you can see behind us, there's beautiful mountain cliff things sticking out the ground. Super, super long beach. I'm very, very touristy here, but the beach is almost empty, to be honest. The water's beautiful. And I just want to say really quickly, that drive here was insanely pretty. It was beautiful. There were huge limestone cliffs on both sides of us. There was big like limestone columns sticking up out the ground. It was like, honestly, it's like postcard stuff. It's, it's just been insane. It was beautiful. Really twisty, windy road. Oh, lovely. I think there's going to be some lovely restaurants here as well, to be honest. Yeah. We passed a few like seafood restaurants, which look quite nice. But we're not going to eat here because we're actually heading to the walking street in Krabby Town which is like a really nice night market that only opens up on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So we'll be checking that out tonight. Oh yeah. We've just found a sea cucumber that looks a little bit... Is it a sea cucumber? A little bit X-rated. Oh, I think he's trying out. We should save him. I'm actually going to throw him back in the water. One sec. That was the weirdest texture I've ever felt. It felt like a like a deflated water balloon. Oh, there's another one! Looking back, they may have actually been penis fish. Not 100% sure, we're gonna Google it and we'll let you know if it is actually a penis fish. There's but it looks like a penis fish. Huh? We've just come off the beach and we're now walking along this seawall and it continues around the coast and I think there might be some really nice spots to catch the sunset because the sun's coming down just over here. So we were walking along this long wallway and we've come to what looks like this big metal box overlooking the water. And this is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. I still think it's real. There's... There's a woman standing right in front of the water on a pedestal. I'll show you. We were just walking along this like edge of the water on this concrete slab and it's going somewhere and at the end of it there's this big massive like reflective metal box and i just thought it was like an old restaurant or something that had become derelict because some of the panels are falling off so i walk past the opening to it and just glance in there is nobody in there but there's this like silhouette of this old woman standing at the very edge of this box overlooking the water but facing towards you and then a group of people come in, a lot of ladies and men wearing like nurse scrubs or doctor scrubs. And the lady tells us the story of no sunrise, no sunset. And that's what the sign meant. You know, this is obviously an art project and Andrew will explain what it's about. Absolutely beautiful, really thought provoking. What a stunning location for it. I'm still not convinced that that's not a real woman. <laughs> So the sculpture inside is actually called No Sunrise, No Sunset. And it's based off of an old story here in Ao Nang where a fisherman went out to sea and never returned. But before he went, he promised his wife that he'd be back. And so every single day and every single night, she stands and she waits for him to return. Really, really, really nice story. Really creepy, really creepy figure. Apparently it's made of wax and it is so lifelike it is unreal i'm not sure if you'll be able to see on the camera with the exposure but it's honestly really creepy but a really really nice story well that sunset was absolutely incredible we're going to jump back on the bikes now head back over to crabby town and then we are going to the walking street market see you back in crabby Hello and welcome to, what's it called? Walking Street. Walking Street. <laughs> it's hip happening here, there are people around. And there's a guy here as well. Only night market. Night market. Walking Street, Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Nice people, nice clouds. Yeah. Good music, good food. Let's see what they've got. Probably the best night market we've ever been to. One of our subscribers recommended Krabby Walking Street and it did not disappoint. There was like a talent show going on, there was a fire guy, singers, there was like traditional dancing. It was amazing. And we had so much food. It was really, really cheap, really affordable. The food was really, really good. Probably, as, as Leanne said, the best night market I think we've ever been to. And we've been to some really good ones and it, you know, but hands down, that was so much better than I thought it was going to be. If you're in Krabby, you have to, and I mean have to go to that market. It's on on a Friday and a Saturday. And a Sunday. And a Sunday. So we might just come for the next three days. Two days. Two days. <laughs> Two days. Two days.